Today on the John Ingeberg Show, each fall, millions of young women enter college expecting to experience the best four years of their life. Yet college often presents unexpected challenges of dealing with roommates, facing the pressures of grades and finances, encountering the party scene, and experiencing the loneliness of being far from parents and family, all of these can cause tremendous struggles. Spiritually, recent surveys report that roughly 70% of Christians who go off to college end up leaving their faith during their first year on campus. How can you avoid becoming part of this discouraging trend? Best-selling author Hannah Seymour has mentored college women for over a decade through the vast array of challenges they face. Her best-selling book, The College Girl's Survival Guide, answers the top 52 concerns she has received from college women about roommate dramas, boyfriend troubles, choosing a major, balancing family and school life, sexual assaults, and much, much more. While college is far from the easiest four years of your life, they will be some of the most formative years of your adult life. You will decide who you are, what you believe in, and what you do with it all. In this series, Hannah Seymour and Michelle Ankerberg join me for an insightful discussion regarding what it takes to handle the unexpected challenges and pressures of college life. Their words are vital for any woman already in college or those heading to college this fall. So join us for today's edition of The John Ankerberg Show. Welcome to our program. I'm John Ankerberg, and I'm really glad that you joined us today. I've got a very special guest that is in big demand, all right? Her name is Hannah Seymour, and she has written this book, The College Girl's Survival Guide. I believe every girl, woman going to college needs to get this book and read it. She's gathered up the 52 top concerns that college women have, have asked her. She has worked in this area for over 10 years, counseling them, helping them. She's been a dorm advisor, she's been a room advisor, she's been all the jobs helping college women and seeing the problems that they have, and she's put it into this book, A College Girl's Survival Guide, all right? And we're gonna be talking about some of those questions that the women have asked her in just a moment. And I also have a real privilege today, my daughter, Michelle, because I realized that the guy should not be in this conversation. This is between <laughs> the girls and, and the, the questions that women ask. And because college is, uh, because Michelle's gone through college and has faced many of these things, I've asked her to sit in on this. But I get to ask the first question today, okay? And Hannah, here's our topic. What can college girls do so they don't fall away from the faith? Now, some people say that's not such an important question. It is an important question. I've got the statistics to, uh, to prove it. You have written in your book just a few years ago in my career, working with college students, I began to see a pattern of sophomores and juniors completely walking away from the Christian faith that they have been raised to believe. More and more studies are showing that it is a frequent occurrence. Yeah. I've done this with some of the top scholars in the country, and when I was doing it with one of them, I found out that statistics showed that about 70%, listen pastors, 70% of Christian young people who attend church weekly, regularly, in your high school classes, will drop out or step away from the Christian faith when they start attending a non-Christian college or university. The question is, why are they leaving behind the faith in which they were supposedly raised? 70% neighbors is a lot of kids, okay? And Hannah, what I'm talking about to you right now, or my question to you is, in terms of college women, mm -hmm. either entering or already there, what are you telling them so that they won't leave the faith? 
you have to know why you believe what you believe. And I, I used to say, well, that's why students are walking away from the Christian faith. They don't know why they believe what they believe. They can't articulate it. But truthfully, I think most of them, they don't even believe anything. They've just been drifting along, going along with what their parents believe, the church that they've been raised in, the youth group that they've surrounded themselves with. They're not coming to college at all determined or committed to the gospel or Jesus's teachings or the Bible. So in order to do that, if you're serious about wanting to know truth and wanting to be committed to the Lord, you've got to know why you believe those things. Digging into scripture, I, I grew up with a preacher daddy that always said the key to Christian living is God's word, God's spirit, and God's people. And if you are not actively, intentionally engaging in those three things, his word, his spirit, and his people, you don't stand a fighting chance, right. especially at a secular university. Right. Mm -hmm. But if you are pursuing truth, because here's the deal, in our Christian lives, we are going to be just overwhelmed with doubts at different seasons, just like waves coming on top of us. We are going to tsunamis of doubts coming on us. Um, we're also in college in particular going to face challenging philosophies and ideas of life, whether that's from your peers, professors. Um, I think about Paul, you know, exhorting, taking every thought captive right. to the obedience of Jesus Christ. Well, you can't take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ unless you know the truth, unless you have a foundational place to start. And so you've got to know why you believe what you believe. You've got to investigate it. If you're hit with doubts, if you're not sure, did Jesus really resurrect from the dead? Is this, I mean, is this really a thing or is this just a nice fairy tale? There are so many resources out there. There's so much information out there, but you've got to do it. You've got to put in the work. I think one of Satan's greatest joys is when we have doubts and we don't do our research and we just slowly, apathetically drift away. It's like the easiest thing for him. Um, but if we pursue truth, God's word, God's spirit, God's people, you're going to find it. You're going to have that foundation. Um, and when doubts come, challenges come, it's going to be so much easier for you to manage. Yeah. Even though you were a preacher's kid, did you struggle with that when you were in college? I, you know what? My, my greatest two seasons of doubt and challenges to the faith were actually in middle school and in high school. Um, I, I had some major issues of not believing, you know, been, being taught that God is a good God and seeing friends um, with young parents die unexpectedly mm -hmm. and struggling with how do, how do bad things happen to good people? Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Is the Jesus and the God that I've been taught about, who's supposed to be loving and good, how does he allow these things to happen? So I had to reconcile and wrestle with a lot of that in middle school and high school. Um, so once I was at college and faced with professors that really slammed my Christian beliefs or friends that believed other things, because I had done my work in investigating and again, creating that foundation of truth, it was a lot easier for me to bounce back and say, that's great, it's fine, you believe what you believe, and I understand that you think what I believe is ridiculous, but I know it's true. Mm -hmm. I've done my research. Yeah, so, let, me, yeah. let me jump in before Michelle asks the next question here. You know, when Darlene and I moved to Chattanooga and we first started the TV show down here, the fact is I decided I'd teach the college age and divorced, okay? So I had a blast with those guys and teaching them what to believe, and a lot of them became elders and ministers in the church, some became missionaries, okay? Which I was really surprised from starting where we started out. But the fact is God moved in their life. When I read your book, I thought of, I wanna be a high school teacher <laughs> because before they ever get to college, you better instruct them because they're hung ducks. If 70% of them are leaving the faith when yeah. they get there, we need to get back. And high school has better be covering these topics. Mm -hmm. I'll go you one further. I talked to a Christian professor that teaches at Harvard and he says, the ones that I love the best are the seventh and eighth graders. Mm -hmm. He says, they've got the best questions. You know why? Because they don't care who's listening to them. They're wide open. They ask the best questions. Yeah. And so sometimes you say, I'd like the seventh and eighth graders because they're going to ask it just the way they think about it. Mm -hmm. And that's before they get to high school, which is no sweet spot for Christians most of the time in our country. That's a setup for a secular college. So you got a one-two step. Boy, you better get some help in there. Mm -hmm. 
But uh, you got another question, Michelle. Well, all that um, leads to when you are in college and no matter you know whether it's a secular or a Christian one, you have to find a good church. Yeah. And that's so hard. I know even going to a Christian college that there were so many different denominations and, and you know, I went to a Baptist church and so to find one that fit what I was used to was very hard. So what do you say to the young women out there that are trying to find a church? So one, it's really easy to go in with a laundry list of things that you want this perfect church to be because you've been at the same church for maybe 18 years and that's the perfect church back at home, you know? Yeah. So letting go of that list, I always tell folks, you know, pick two to three things that are really important to you. And if you've got three, you might have to just settle with two, you know, if you find a church that even meets two of those. Um, because a church is not, you know, we're not going shopping for a sweater. Yeah. This is a body of believers. This is, this is God's people coming together to worship Him, to be reminded of truth, to encourage each other. That's what church is. So we're not looking for something that meets all our needs and wants. Um, I always encourage them, number one, find a church that opens the Bible mm -hmm. and teaches out of it. And I know that sounds simple or <laughs> silly or whatever, but it's kind of becoming more and more rare. So, but you want to go to church because here's the deal. There are so many self-help books out there. Mm -hmm. You can get all of that on your own. Right. You want to go to church and be taught by someone who's opening God's word and is trying to unpack what did this mean in the context that it was written and what does it mean today? What does it mean for us to apply this to our lives? So finding a church that opens God's word. Um, a lot of college students, a lot of us in general really care about worship. We care about the music being great. I live in Nashville. It's hard to find a church where the worship isn't phenomenal. Um, but most of us, my college town, that was not the scenario. And I really struggled. I, I chose a church. I hated the music. Mm -hmm. The singers were bad. The you know drum player wasn't on beat. It was like <laughs> so painful for me. And I would show up about 15 to 20 minutes late every Sunday, slide in, skip the music so that I could just hear the teaching. And looking back, I mean, I wish I could give myself the advice, you need to get over it. If this is the <laughs> church you decided to plug into, these men and women up on stage are genuinely trying to honor and worship the Lord. Right. This is, a, again, going back to you, this is a heart issue. This is not a musicality issue. Right. Um, if they are trying to lead you in worship, you need to show up and do the same. God does not care how it sounds. He cares about the heart. I needed to get my heart right. So, that, so that's the other big piece. Right. And then the third that I think is really important for college students, it's easy in most college towns to find a church with lots of college students. Mm. But go to a church where there are younger people than you and older people than you. It's really important to have the life perspective right. of some folks that are beyond your season of life and for you to start pouring into folks that are younger than you. Right. So a multi-generational church I think is really important. Yeah, let me, let me just follow up on it. Let me summarize this thing. Find a church that does at least this, okay? They have a Bible and they show it to you. <laughs> they put it down and the guy reads a passage from the Bible. And hopefully it's either on the screens or there's one in the pew that you can open, you can see for yourself, or hopefully you've got your own, okay? the guy reads the passage. Then finally, instead of putting the Bible away after he's read the passage, he actually <laughs> preaches from the words that he just read yeah. and he practically assigns them to you. In other words, he tells you how do you put these into practice in your own life. So when you get out of there, you know, you read the Bible, you heard what God said, mm -hmm. You heard how it applies to your life and you got a decision. Am I going to do this or not? Mm -hmm. If you can find that, okay, and believe me, you are correct. A lot of people, they read a passage and they put the Bible away mm -hmm. and you, you know, we're in television and I watch a lot of other television preachers. I listened to a guy the other night, he spoke for one hour and I never heard one Bible verse. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm saying, he might have had a lot of nice thoughts. I'm just saying, if you want to hear what God has to say, mm -hmm. the guy's got to open up the Bible. He's got to read it to you. He's got to explain what it means and apply it to your life. If you get into that, you got a great start. Mm -hmm. And I love what you said. You got to do a little research on your own. Mm -hmm. You have to visit them three times yep. at least. Yep. And if you don't hear that, then move on until you find them. <laughs> and it may be a different denomination than you grew up in, but find somebody that's preaching from the Bible, okay? 
We're talking with Hannah Seymour about her great book, The College Girl's Survival Guide. Every Christian girl, even non-Christian girl, ought to have it because she's got the 52 major concerns that college women have, and she answers them, and I love the answers that she gives. Now, what if you're on a college campus, and it's a secular university campus, and uh, there's 20 to 30,000 students at that campus, you don't know one Christian, you're coming in, how in the world do I find Christian friends in this mass of humanity that are mostly pagans? And we've got a question here that goes back, and Michelle, I'll let you give it. Hannah, this has to do with um, someone asking you, how do you find good Christian friends at college? And a girl wrote you and said, I get that I need Christian community to encourage me and to help me grow but where am I supposed to find these people? <laughs> Such a great question. And the easiest place to start is finding the Christian organizations on your college campus. There are a slew of them. Mm -hmm. Some of them include Crew, Inner Varsity, Fellowship of Christian Athletes, The Navigators, Young Life, Baptist Collegiate Ministry, Reformed University Fellowship, Delight Ministries, the list truly goes on and on. Your college campus has at least one, if not multiple Christian organizations. You are going to find out when they meet. Most of them have a large group meeting and then they have small groups throughout the week. Go to every large group meeting of all of the organizations. They will be all very different. You will feel the vibe and you will sense which one is gonna fit you. And then what's crucial is you've got to get plugged in. So joining a small group, I always tell girls, often they will join a small group and they'll go a couple weeks and go, none of these girls are my kind of people. <laughs> I don't care, stick it right. out. Because sometimes God uses other brothers and sisters in Christ that are very different from us to become great friends and to help grow us. So stick it out, commit to plugging into a small group and really pursue great, meaningful friendships. Mm -hmm. My very best Christian friends in college all came from the Christian organization mm -hmm. that I was involved in. I lived with five of them mm -hmm. the, my last year of school. Um, but that's where I found them. I yeah. found them in small groups and pursuing them after committing to that organization. Right. right. All right, another girl wrote you and said, I've been praying for a specific situation for quite some time. And here it is, it just feels like God is not responding when I pray. What am I supposed to do? It feels like God has gone silent on me. Hmm. So there are a few things going on there, but the first that we know, Isaiah 59, one to two says, surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to save, nor his ear to hear, but your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he will not hear. James 4 also says something similar. James says, you do not have because you do not ask God. And when you do ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. Yep. So sometimes I think that God is silent because we are living in sin, we are asking with wrong motives and God, his word tells us, he doesn't play that game. Sometimes that is happening. Mm -hmm. Other times I think we are looking for an answer from God. A great example, should I go out on a date with that guy? Okay, so we know God has given us his word, his spirit and his people to guide us in our Christian walk. Well, sometimes the Bible says exactly what we need it to say and the Bible has the answer to your question. Um, it probably doesn't have the answer to should I go out on a date with that guy? Mm -hmm. But there is general wisdom in there you have wisdom from the Holy Spirit and you have God's people to help guide you. So I think a lot of times when, especially college women are asking that question and saying, well, God's silent. They're looking for a magical sign in the clouds to tell them what to do. And many times I think the Lord is right there. He cares immensely what's going on in their life, but he's given them his word, his spirit and his people to help guide them. So it's not an issue of God being silent. It's an issue of us taking up those three things and walking forward in wisdom, again, trusting that God is in control. Right. Okay, big question, the big picture question, girls have written this, what's God's will for my life as a college woman? They are looking for the answer of God's will for my life is to have this career, is to marry this man, is to buy that house, that dog, have that many children, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, God's word does not tell us those things, does it? <laughs> it does not outline, unfortunately, <laughs> yeah. it does not outline those things. Um, 
But God's word is explicit with verses over and over that say, this is God's will for your life. It is God's will for you to love him and not the world. It is God's will for you to be sanctified in holiness, which the Bible says explicitly excludes sexual immorality. It's his desire for you to submit to his authority, to allow him to be Lord over your life. It's his will, one of my favorite verses, rejoice always, pray all the time, be thankful no matter what your circumstances. That is God's will for your life. And I think my goal and desire is to help college women understand that if you spend more time worrying about those things and doing what God's word says, where it, ex where it explicitly says his will in those areas, um, the rest will follow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, follow a question. How desperate are you to know God's will for your life is one of the questions you ask women in college. Mm -hmm. You know, they want to know God's will for their life. Then you come back and you say, okay, if that's so, kind of, you know, show me, tell me, you know, how would I know that you are really desperate mm -hmm. to know God's will for your life? Mm -hmm. Again, they are, they are desperate to know the step-by-step -step plans <laughs> of how their life should unfold. And, you know, going back to my preacher daddy's, the key to Christian living, God's word, God's spirit, God's people. If you are desperate to know God's will for your life, you are chasing after those things. You're pouring yourself into those things. And if you do, God will richly bless you for your efforts. Mm -hmm. Do you think a lot of girls care more about the material things rather than the moral things when they're in college? Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, it's easier, again, to get ourselves wrapped up in what's the what's God's will for my life and my career and my calling and my husband and, you know, all these things that I do. Um, and I get it. We are, that's what we see. Mm -hmm. We are inundated with this world, with the things of the flesh, and it matters. Mm -hmm. But again, God's eternal kingdom, what he wants for us spiritually matters so much more. If we chase after those things, the earthly stuff will fall into line. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hannah, what is the reason that you wrote this book? <laughs> I have had thousands, probably millions of conversations with women, both in my office and then over the internet, over my blog for almost 12 years now. And over and over and over, it's the same issues. And I just wanted to package something that would be helpful to them, but more importantly, rooted in God's word. So, you know, yes, there are lists of nice things to do for a nice life, but at the end of the day, do you understand what Christ has done for you? And if we understand that, how might that transform our college experience and transform the rest of our adulthood? Yeah. yeah, and what I like about this is that you write it for the millennial age. These are not 65 page answers, <laughs> okay? It is brief, it is boom, 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 three or four pages at the most, and you're on to the next question. You've got 52 of them, and I think that college women ought to have this all through four years and refer to it constantly because they're going to be faced with many of these questions on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. All right? Folks, um, I thank you for joining us. And we want to say thank you to Hannah for sharing all of this great information. Michelle and I really appreciate you breaking into your schedule to be here because I know you're, you're traveling coast to coast and everybody wants a piece of you right now, okay? <laughs> so thank you for coming and sharing with our audience all of this information. And folks, I want you to stay tuned because in a moment I've got a personal word for you. I hope you've enjoyed today's program featuring Hannah Seymour. If so, you'll want to receive a copy of her new best-selling book for young women called The College Girl's Survival Guide. Hannah's best insights are in this book, including answers to the top 52 questions she's received about roommates, boyfriends, choosing a major, balancing family and school life, sexual assaults, and much more. And you can request your copy of her book for a gift of only $15. If you'd also like to have a copy of today's television programs with Hannah to watch again or share with a young woman entering college or already in college, you can receive all five television programs in our series on DVD. 
In our programs, Hannah addresses the misconception of believing that college is the best four years of your life, of dealing with roommates that you've never met before, handling the stress of coursework, and choosing or changing a major, how to find friends to help you grow in your faith, how to handle the loneliness of being away from family and friends, and the problem of sexual assaults. The five programs in this series come in a special package with both Blu-ray and DVD formats. It includes a copy of Hannah's best-selling book, The College Girl's Survival Guide. They're available together for a gift of only $64. Then additional copies of her book can be requested for $15 each. Then finally, to protect your faith in Jesus, I'm also making available two important series that I've recorded called So You Don't Fall Away From The Faith and Questions The World Will Ask About Your Faith. These programs feature one of the world's foremost New Testament scholars and apologists, Dr. Daryl Bach. He answers the questions, how do we know that the information in the New Testament books contain the best historical evidence there is for what Jesus said and did. Was the message Jesus preached changed over time by the early Christians? Or has Jesus' message remained the same right down to our day? How did the early Christians come to the conclusion that the apostles' books and letters were to be considered scripture equal in authority with the Old Testament scriptures? And who decided which books would become part of the canon of scripture? And then my second series with Dr. Bach is called Questions the World Will Ask About Your Faith. Here we explain why Jesus never intended for anyone to conclude he was just another religious leader. Rather, he wanted people to know he was God in human flesh. How do we know that Jesus really rose from the dead and actually appeared to over 500 people? Can the resurrection appearances be explained away by different psychological theories today? These programs will help you remain strong in your faith and prepared to answer questions your friends on campus will ask you about Jesus. And you can request all three of these resources, including Hannah Seymour's best-selling book, The College Girl's Survival Guide, our five-program DVD series with Hannah called The College Girl's Survival Guide, and then our six programs with Dr. Daryl Bach on DVD for your gift of only $99. You may request all of this information in this special package right now by calling us at 1-800-805-3030. That's 1-800-805-3030. You may also request these materials at our website at jashow.org.